right? We're going to quickly go through the three-phase ESS system, which is DC coupled. So I'm going to share a screen here. Here we go. And I will stop my video so that it makes a bit of sense. So there we go. We'll share that. Stop my video. And right, so you're going to obviously have a list of gear. Right, sorry, just getting some stuff sorted. List of gear, you've got a Victron, Smart Solar RS4 5100, that's a charge controller, 450 volts 100, and you've got another charge controller, 450 volts 200, and you have uh, panels, Victron Multi Plus Inverters times three, Servo GX, GX uh, Servo GX touchscreen, um, Victron energy meter isolators, but you won't have isolators. You've actually got circuit breakers in this case. A uh, few leads and uh, Zigbee device as well. So, and what I mean, you got Zigbee, right? So, let's have a look at the basic gear. Here it is. So, You've got an energy meter, looks like that. It's three phase, so it'll be slightly wider than that. That's actually a photo of a single phase one. And you've got a couple of Zigbee devices. You've got three inverters, so multi plus 248, 5000 inverters. It's 48 volts, 5000 watts. And you've got Two MPPTs, one's a 200. I know it says 100, that's just the photo. And the other one is a 100. So you've got two of those. And you also have a couple of batteries, I believe. Um, yep, two, two batteries. Let me go back to this, sorry. Two Freedom One batteries, 10 eights, 10 kilowatts. Now the batteries come with built-in isolators, so you don't need any isolation apart from the battery. And they also come with built-in leads. Uh, you've got a Servo GX device, which is the brains, the computer of the whole system. All these devices here will link somehow or other with the leads that are supplied into the Servo GX. And the Servo GX also has its own screen. So, the customer can see it and you can also program it from on site. You've got six circuit breakers instead of the six um, DC isolators that we're going to be supplied. Um, so six circuit breakers and they are just fuse isolators effectively just to fuse, uh, not fuse, they're just isolators basically to isolate the strings coming into the MPPTs. Each MPPT has two, well, sorry, uh, the MPPT 100, 100 amp unit has two string trackers and the 200 amp unit has four string trackers and each string can go up to 450 volts. So normally that's sort of seven or eight panels per string. Right, let's go down to the wiring diagram and see how all this fits together. So you've got your incoming grid. It's going to go through your standard meter. And then that meter is going to go to your switchboard. Now, I've split the switchboard out into essential, uh, non-essential first, and then essential. Now, you may decide if there's huge loads on the system, like say a spa pool or a swimming pool or heat pumps. You may decide to put those on the non-essential which basically means non-essential is if the grid goes down and you're running just from the inverters, then non-essential will not be alive. But when the grid is there, 
and you're running from the inverters, the essential is alive. So you can either have two completely separate boards, but generally what happens is you just split one row or even one RCBO or one RCD or a set of circuits as non-essential. And then you go out to your inverters. But most people seem to just run it as essential. The whole lot is essential. So you could actually just delete that non-essential system completely and not worry about it at all. Just have the whole lot running as essential. If you wanted to, you just have the whole lot running as essential. So let's assume that's what you're going to do. Now, the energy meter is a three-phase energy meter. Just put the three phases through it. Um, and that needs to be at the meter. Well, not necessarily right at the meter, but before any load. So if you were going to have the non-essential board and split off some big loads, then what you would do is you would have the meter before all the three phases would come in before those non-essential loads. The reason for that is that these three inverters can keep providing when the grid is connected, they actually can push energy back to the non-essential loads by gauging the, the grid point at, at uh, before those loads between the metering and the non-essential loads. So how does that grid meter actually communicate? If it's close to the whole system, then you can just use the USB cable. It's about a, well, it's a three meter or a 10 meter. Uh, sorry, two meter, 1.8 meters, or a 10 meter um, USB cable. And that's a direct connection to the Serbo GX. If it's in a different building or uh, further than 10 meters away, then you use the wireless and that will go however far wireless goes. So it depends on the environment, depends on the cladding of the building. If it's a metal building, you probably don't want to rely on it for more than about 30 meters. Um, but that uses Zigbee, high power radios, point-to-point um, -point wireless. So those are also supplied. So let's come back to the Victron inverters. Okay, so the Victron inverters, one inverter per phase. So you're wiring them up as single phase inverters and one inverter per phase. The neutral on the inverters is common and the battery connections are also common. So your positive and negative from your battery are also common. And then those inverters will connect together. You've got AC input, one for each phase, and you've got AC output to your switchboard, um, one for each phase. Very basic. Now, the key uh, is if you've got, uh, actually, no, if you've got parallel inverters on the same phase, you need to keep the AC and the DC cable lengths the same length. But because you haven't, you've got individual loads running off individual inverters, it doesn't matter. But try and spread the loads so you don't get more than five or six kilowatts um, of maximum demand expected per phase, per inverter. So the more you can spread those loads, um, the better it will be when the system goes into backup. When the grid goes down, you don't want the one inverter to be majorly overloaded and the other two doing nothing. You'd, and then therefore the whole system would shut down. You want all the inverters to be evenly loaded as much as possible. So you might have to do a little bit of uh, load shedding on the distribution board. Right. Um, the DC side, will all come back from the inverters. I've just done red cables there, but they're red and black, whatever, positive and negative. They will come back to a common point. Now the batteries already have three meters of cable built in, positive and negative, 50 mil. You just need to take those to a common point, which could be a bus bar or simply a stud, and then bring positive and negative to each inverter. Don't worry about circuit breakers on each inverter. If you do put a breaker on or a disconnect, um, then you would only disconnect the positive. Do not disconnect the negative. Now, positive and negative are also going to come from your charge controllers. 
So these are the charge controllers. They're going to be connected to the bus bar with positive and negative cables. Now, it doesn't matter about the length of the cables, so long as you, know, you don't get too much voltage drop, but it really doesn't matter about the length because the batteries are controlling the voltage. And you just need to make sure that the rating of the circuit breaker on the battery um, is less than what the cable can handle. So if the battery's got 50 mil cable, generally you can put 50 mil cable onto each of these RS450 MPPTs and up to each inverter. Now, what you're going to do is you're then going to connect your DC panels, solar panels, to the RS inverters. Now, the RS200 has four MPPT trackers, and each MPPT can handle up to 450 volts. Same with the RS100, except the 100 only has, did I say the 400? So the 200 has four trackers, the 100 has two trackers. So you can do two strings. You can also parallel strings if you want to, um, but usually it's not required. Um, yeah, so four strings into the 200 amp um, and two strings into the 100 amp. And each string will just be isolated by a circuit breaker. So you're going to have a circuit breaker. You'll have two on the bottom and four on the top, just isolating each string. Just going to draw this in nicely for you. Why not? So now that's taking care of the DC panels through the isolators into the MPPT trackers and then the MPPTs onto the DC bus. Batteries onto the DC bus. Inverters onto the DC bus. And each, each uh, MPPT will be connected by a VE direct cable. And that's a Victron VE direct cable. And it's pretty obvious inside the Servo GX, you have a VE direct a series of VE direct ports, you just connect it straight in, and the Servo GX will see them there. Um, the batteries are connected by an RS485, uh, sorry, uh, yes, an RJ45 cable, so that's a standard Ethernet cable, and that goes into the BMS CAN port on the Servo GX, and they are daisy chained. So these units here, basically connect from one to the other and they daisy chain the batteries will just daisy chain to each other pretty simple you'll see the ports there and you just connect the two the, the data cables one to the other and then the end the last battery has an end of line resistor in it as does the port on the servo gx now, the Servo GX then connects to the Ethernet router, which is a customer's Ethernet router. That can either be hardwired. If you can get a cable, that's great because it's quicker, uh, more reliable. It reconnects faster, all of that good stuff. Um, but if you can't get a cable to it, then you can connect the wireless, what we call a gem bird. It's just a USB Wi-Fi unit. Plugs into the USB in the Servo GX and then you register it onto the Wi-Fi network of the customer and away you go. And then you can connect the system to the VRM portal. I will send, uh, or you can ask for instructions on how to connect that to the VRM. It's pretty straightforward. I would really encourage you to enclose the Servo GX into a box. It just makes it look a lot neater and stops prying hands in the future um, from unplugging different plugs. Um, and I would also, on the same box, if you've got room, I would uh, mount the screen on the outside of the box, just cut a hole into it. So take a hole saw, uh, sorry, a, yeah, well, hole saw and jigsaw. Um, now, the inverters will connect 
using RJ45 cables. So they're going to still use an Ethernet cable, but it's the VE bus. It's actually plugged into the VE bus port. VE just stands for Victron Energy. VE bus port, and it goes from the Servo GX up to the inverter, first inverter, and then there's two VE bus ports on each inverter, then click through to the other inverter, click through to the other inverter, and then an end of line resistor on that. Now, what you need to do is go on to um, go on to Victron Energy website and do a search um, on programming up the Freedom One batteries. But you don't necessarily have to do that if, if I can set that up for you remotely. Once you've got the, the Servo GX registered onto the VRM portal, add my email address into it, and then I will be able to have access to it. Give me full control, and I can program all the inverters and the Freedom One batteries and the RS 450s into uh, the system so that it all works together nicely. Now, one thing you do need to do with a three-phase system is a little bit of a step that's required. So you're going to need to plug your laptop in and uh, you need a Mark III USB cable, which is a programming cable. Sorry, I've just dropped off to something else there. A Mark III USB cable, which is actually a programming lead. Um, and that, then you plug your laptop into the three inverters and you set them up as a three phase system. So that needs to be done before the system can be fully programmed. It's, a, it's an initial VE bus setup. So what you're going to need there is a Mark III USB, and I'm not sure if you've got that in your setup or not. I'll have a look and I'll let you know. Okay, that is pretty much it.